Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and today we are going to learn how to construct our standardized Kinex vehicle that we will be using for all future force and motion experiments during our science unit. As you can see, I have the uh, diagram that I provided to you out, along with a finished product of what your standardized vehicle should look like. So uh, comparing it to the side view and the top view. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through how to build that standardized vehicle from the ground up. So these are the pieces that you're going to need. You're going to need two of the tan connectors, three of the gray connectors, four of the red connectors, you need four of the yellow connectors, two blue rods, two red rods, two gray rods, two of the smaller wheels, two of the larger wheels, and two of the larger tires. Now I'm going to start with the gray rods and the yellow connectors. Okay, I'm going to add a yellow connector to each end of a gray rod, like so. These are going to form the basis of our, let's call it the chassis of our vehicle. Okay. Now I need the two red rods that are going to act as our axles. An axle is basically a rod that has tires on either end or however many tires are on the axle. Now I want you to pay attention to how I connect these red rods. If you look at the diagram from the top view, otherwise known as the bird's eye view, you're going to notice that the placement of the rods differs from front to back. Okay? On the front end of our, of our vehicle, we're going to uh, affix the rod in the teeth on the very front of the yellow connector, like so. Okay, both sides. But on the back, we're going to thread the red rod through the hole in the center of the yellow connector. Okay, so as you can see, my front axle, my front rod, is now fixed, but my back axle can spin freely. Now that's going to be important later on uh, when we conduct different kinds of experiments with this standardized vehicle. All right, so now the next step is going to be connecting the wheels to the axles. I'm going to start with the, uh, the large wheels, which I have to uh, put the, the rubber tires around. Interesting tidbit of uh, trivia. Uh, the uh, company that makes the most tires in the world is not what you would think, Goodyear, Continental, Michelin. No, it's actually the Lego company uh, that produces the most uh, rubber tires in the world. Think about all the little Lego sets they make on all those little rubber tires. Uh, if you were to count them by unit, Lego makes more tires than anyone else in the world. Okay. Now these tires connected to these large wheels have two sides. The front side has like a decorative rim design on it, but on the back side you're gonna see that next to the the hole for the axle there's another small, smaller hole right there and that is used to connect the tan connector by threading the little rod on the connector through that little hole, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tan connector like our diagram shows and I'm going to snap it onto the red rod, the red axle, like so. Little parts. There we go. So I've got one and I've got two. And the reason why the tan connectors are going on like so is because the uh, the big tires, once you thread them through the rod, need to be attached to that axle. So by connecting them uh, with the tan connector, it allows the uh, tires to stay on. Okay. So now that I have my back wheels on, I need to connect the front wheels. Now the front wheels don't get any tires, so we're just going to thread them through. And both sides of the front wheels are identical. Okay. So it doesn't matter which side you thread through the rod. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those gray connectors. I'm going to take two of the gray connectors and I'm going to just snap them on the outside of the axle, kind of sandwiching the uh, gray connector and the yellow connector with the tire in the middle, or the, or the wheel, I should say. Now the reason why we've done it this way is so that on the front end of your vehicle, the wheels can spin independent from the axle. The wheels spin freely. Okay? But on the back end of your vehicle, the tires, the wheels, are connected to 
the axle. So as the wheels and the back spin, so does the axle. Okay. Most uh, uh, front wheel drive cars basically work the same way. The front end of the uh, car has an axle that is connected to your engine, and that's what propels the vehicle forward. The back axle usually has wheels that spin independently. Okay? So now that we've built the basis of our vehicle, we now have to attach these braces that we're going to build out of our red connectors and blue rods. Okay? So we're just going to connect a red connector to the end of each blue rod. And then this is going to help give our, uh, our chassis, our uh, base of our vehicle, a little bit more stability. Okay? So I'm going to snap the teeth onto the gray rods. And the placement for now along the gray rod isn't that important. It just has to have two of them on the gray rods, two of these braces. Okay. Now, as you can see, my, uh, my gray rods are buckling a little bit towards the front, which means I've got to space out my gray rods so that they're about equal distance from uh, the front to the back so that uh, my gray rods are parallel. Okay. And that's going to allow more freedom of motion. Okay. Now, according to our diagram, our vehicle is finished. But I am going to ask you to make one more modification. That's why we have a third gray connector. And that third gray connector is going to go in the middle of our back axle connected to that gray rod right there. Okay. This is going to provide a peg for us to attach things to later on. Okay, so when we create uh, uh, different experiments, we are going to be using this vehicle in different ways, and this uh, little gray piece here is going to come in handy. Okay, and that, my friends, is my standardized vehicle. As you can see, it is identical to the one I showed you before, and that is the purpose. Uh, when we conduct experiments, we need to think about the controls, the things that stay the same, and the variables, uh, the things that change, that we measure with the data. Um, one of the things we wanted to eliminate in our experiments going forward is the variable of vehicle design. Okay, uh, Students would get different results if they each used their own design of vehicle, and we want to eliminate that variable when uh, we look at different aspects of force and motion going forward. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, watch it uh, to your, uh, to your uh, need uh, in order to uh, complete this vehicle, and uh, good luck. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.